Hello, guys, and welcome to the live stream. So it is an honor to present to you the Economic Ninja. So welcome to the show. How's it going, my man? Great, man. How you doing? Yeah, really, really good. You know, I could probably talk with you for about six hours, but we'll try and keep it. I know your time is sacred, so. Yeah, actually, you know, funny story. Uh, I had a subscriber that came out from California to Denver at, yeah. to see us at the last meetup and then was in my neck of the woods today. And we were trying to figure out a time to get coffee. And the only time was literally right now that they could meet because they're having oh, no. drive five hours home. I had to turn them down. I oh, said, my. <laughs> we already had this set up. I knew you'd already set it up live. So I literally <laughs> sent them um, a, uh, a link to this. So hopefully they're watching. But yeah, oh, I yeah. had to break that deal. But I, he, his name's Squatchy. So I got this for him. So oh, yeah. oh, nice. But honestly, no joke. I, I really take my subscribers very serious. And um, I'm so grateful for them. I know you've been a subscriber for a long time. It's just absolutely a pleasure of mine to be on your channel and watch your channel grow. It's super cool, man. So let's do this. <laughs> Ah, yeah, let's do this, man. You know, you were a big inspiration for this channel. I think we've had like conversations in the comments about this before, yeah. but I just want to say thank you so much for all the hard work you've done. I don't know how you pack in as many videos as you do per day. Ask, ask, don't ask my wife that question, actually. <laughs> that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long, long, crazy year and a half. And but I'm gonna be honest with you, man, without getting trying to get emotional, it's been such a blessing. I mean, mm -hmm. I was literally in Walmart today because my my wife goes, Hey, we're out of dog food. I'm like, oh, there's gonna be another shortage, I could tell. And, <laughs> and I'm literally walking through the aisles, going to get some dog food, and I see a gentleman like with dog food heaped up in his cart. And rather than go, Well, he's taking all my dog food, I literally thought I'm like I wonder if he watches my channel. And I went and grabbed the last three bags of dog food. I go in line and that guy turns around and starts yelling at the top of his lungs. I know you. I know you. And, and so his wife's taking photos of us in, in Walmart. But uh, it was neat because he said, he goes, this is, you know, he's like, I, he's like so many things from the channel you've, you know, have talked about. And it's happened. Mm -hmm. And even last night's live stream, when I was talking about the price of gold and silver spiking, don't worry, it's emotional, it'll come back down. And yeah. uh, it's just, it's so neat to meet subscribers. And and I, I, I don't even know if that's like a bad word, but I, it just like, it's so amazing. I used to get really stressed and scared and my yeah. chest would pound. Uh, like somebody <laughs> coming to my house and found me in my house, that kind of story. But it's like, but now I've just embraced it. And I'm just so grateful for you guys, everybody, not you guys. It's like... <laughs> It, we're a community there's there's no me and, and you or you know what i mean it's like this these are just real people that are coming together it's awesome yeah yeah no you're exactly right about that and like some of the content that you put out in particular is so important and it's just like that logical thinking. And I think your charisma is just so awesome that people, like I know when I initially found you, I was like, oh my God, this guy has like the charisma of this amazing dad type guy. <laughs> well, I got a, I've got a dad bod. Uh, I don't, you know, that doesn't get me very, very far, but no, thank you so much. You know, I've, I've been in front of, I used to be a comedian when I was really young. So I've been in front of crowds. I'm used to that. Um, I tell people, you know, I would talk to you the same as I talked to the president of the United States. True story. I've said the craziest things in front of a president of world. Really? Leaders. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got some photos to prove it. But that will come out like when I you know, hopefully if I can hit a million subscribers, I'll bring out the pictures and the stories of me and the president and the governor. <laughs> and stuff. Interesting I, stories. I, I think you will hit a million. And it, the growth of your channel, my God, man, you add like just a crazy amount of people to your channel every single day. It's such a blessing. And honestly, it's because, and I, I can't be more sincere when I say that you only are, you'll only get as far as you take other people. There's yes. people that, there yeah. are people that step on each other's backs or other people's backs or stab them in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They get the gratification and, the, and that little bit of money that gain for a little yeah. bit of time, but either they can't sleep at night or they live a miserable life. And I'm not joking. Like if you help people, it flows. It's the, you know, the law of, of reaping and sowing. And I want to, I want to reap what I sow and I want to sow a really big harvest. Yeah. Yeah. That is an important message right there. So, um, 
one of the things I wanted to really talk to you about, because you have like such a background and I remember you, this was quite a while ago in a video you did like long time ago. I'm talking like nine, 10 months ago. Yeah. You were saying like uh, there was a story with you and a neighbor and you fell out. And I was wondering if you remember that story to tell people about real estate and what the euphoric market can kind of do to people and kind of send them a little crazy because. So I've told a bunch of stories. Let me think if it's the one I'm thinking of. Hold I, th on. I think he was retired. Forward. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it was a retired one. Okay. So. So I moved into an area in 2005 at the top of the market, mid 2005, I bought a house. Um, we had actually moved out of the town because uh, we had a string of divorces in our families. And I just literally picked up my family. I said, we're leaving town. No way am I going to be a part of all this crazy drama. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> about six weeks later, we found out we we're pregnant with our second child. And I said, <laughs> what? I need my mommy. <laughs> and I said, we're moving back. Because my mom was an awesome inspiration, an amazing uh, grandmother. And I said, I need help. And uh, that was back then when I was working a lot at the fire station over time. And uh, we were still running a real estate business. And mm -hmm. so we were slammed, moved back. And this gentleman uh, and his wife had just retired in the top of 2005. Now, mind you, I was selling off about 85, 90% of our real estate holdings that year. And I was screaming run for the hills. <laughs> By mid-2005, 2006, we were in the collapse. So we, the, the mortgage-backed securities were coming home to roost. Everything was collapsing. Interest rates were going up. People were not able to pay their bills, all that stuff. We were starting mm -hmm. to see inflation, but more, you know, outside of just the home prices. Yeah. Um, but it was it was getting nutty. These people that next door to me, or I don't know how long we should talk about this, but they <laughs> were just retired and I was warning them. And they were getting angry and frustrated with me. You could tell they were, we were friends. We had dinner every night or every weekend. We would hang out, have beers or, or a dinner. And we were friends. But they, you could tell it was getting on them. And one day, the man said to me, he goes, it's people like you are the reasons why markets crash. And I remember I that line. Believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, are you, are you, are you crazy? And, and I'm like, oh, me, like, what, you think that I have the power of my tongue, you know, by the powers of Grayskull, real estate <laughs> shall collapse. And I'm like, no, and that's just not what happens. But, okay, some people think that. And what happened is the crash came through and their retirement, because they were contractors, they owned a construction company, a very successful one, their money was all wrapped up, their retirement in the stock market. Well, in right. 2000, between 2007, 2009, the Dow Jones and other indices had lost 50% of their value for the second time in this century. Second mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. 50% wiped out. They didn't have enough or the perception of, oh my gosh, we had this much. Now, if it fell in half, we are um, literally essentially pulling out double each month to live, right? And they mm -hmm. didn't know their home. They, um, they drove very modest vehicles, so which was good. Um, but they did not own their home. And I remember even at that point being retired, they had to pay payments on a new refrigerator. Okay. So right. to give you an idea that I was the reason that now they're in this position because I was telling them that it was going to crash and they didn't understand market cycles. I tried to explain this to them. Yeah. They, they said things like, you think you're just so smart, aren't you? Well, back then we were millionaires. We didn't look like it. We just lived across the street and I was trying to share with them things. But I didn't sit there and like, you know, flaunt it and come out and like, you know, diamond studded boots. Look at me with the diamond studded boots. You know, <laughs> yeah. You to listen, like you pull up in a Ferrari and all of a sudden everybody wants to listen to you. And that happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's very head. true. And I, it made me feel disgusted and sick to my stomach. Well, um, they lost everything. They had to go back to work and they both worked at a, a local school as a secretary and a janitor. And guess what? They just retired for the second time. And guess what? They don't own their house. You and are kidding I'm me. I'm dead serious. You can't make this stuff up. And the and it's like and and you no, know, we we hadn't spoken in a while. We had a falling out because uh, and that's a whole nother story I need to tell one of these days based mm -hmm. on a solar salesman. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I always used to say, you if you believe a liar, you get a liar's reward in life. Right. It's very important who you listen to, and and when you hear things and you take it in, mull it over, chew it over, because if you you, know, you your life is based on who you believe, what you believe. Um, and it's, it's a whole, that's a whole nother chapter, but, but yeah, that, that was essentially the story. And um, they just retired and yeah, everything looks great. Uh, the market's up. 
what happens when it's not? And so hopefully people like that pay off their home and pay off all their debt. But we'll yeah, see. that's the, you know, the interesting thing, and you might not be aware, I'm not sure, but the Canadian market is like exactly like the insanity in 2008 and before 2008. Like we see the same thing that you guys saw back in, you know, 2005, 2004, 2006, whenever it was. And to be honest, like the one thing that is insane is a lot of people over the past two years have withdrew equity from their home. I'm talking about people retiring and giving it to their like their young children. Well, not young children or whatever. Yeah. Their millennial children said, hey, go and buy a home. And yeah. and it is like everything is gambling into real estate and um, Canada didn't really suffer in 2008, as you probably know. And yeah. um, I think a lot of people in Canada get a false sense of security from that because they don't really understand that markets can sometimes go in these longer cycles. Like sometimes it's not every 10 years. Sometimes it's a super bubble, like Jeremy Grantham says, or something like that. So well, if you if you don't mind, I'll jump in. There's a little bit yeah. of Canadian real estate history most people don't realize. And, and that's between 2015 and 2018. There was a bubble that was built in that real estate market. And it had to do with Chinese or Asian investors and old, rundown, destroyed mansions. And there was a time when uh, out of country buyers were buying up disgusting pieces of real estate and they were going, you know, overbid. They were selling all cash. It was going for stupid valuations and people could not understand why. And one of the theories was that people were essentially buying citizenship or buying, uh, being able to take money mm, out of one yeah. country and into another. And that was a bubble that, that ended up not really popping. It just sort of fizzled out. Yeah. It, it didn't affect a lot of people, right? It was just a way of moving money into another country. And what I think is very interesting or important to note is that even though Canada didn't go through the same issues like our country, the reason why their bubble wasn't as big as ours was because of how hard it is and and you got you could speak probably better than i on this how hard it is to get a mortgage well you know how many different companies are competing for your business yes Canada, i'm pretty yeah. sure are there's not as many mortgage companies or online institutions as there mm -hmm. are in america yes um, one yeah, reason for that is the demographics of population things like that there's still a, the great you know northwest you know the great your your can your country is so much more sparsely uh, populated in America yeah. is less uh, things. So, so there's not as many people vying for your business, which means it's still a little bit more expensive to, to buy a house in Canada. So that's one reason why that bubble didn't get blown up like it did in America. Yeah. Yeah. No. And the other thing is like, uh, which is important to note as well, like we didn't really suffer from the dot com crash because how all the bubble in America started really was the lowering of interest rates after the dot com crash and everything that happened there. But yeah. that didn't really like Canada didn't really suffer. So I'm actually from the UK and okay. we saw a big blowout in 2008 in real estate. And it was just interesting time because at that time I was actually in school but even then I can remember like everybody was jumping on the bandwagon of real estate and even my parents at the time were looking at houses and I was like what is going on like why are we looking at these huge houses like have we can we suddenly afford this and yeah. there was there was all like this you know sort of Ponzi financing to a certain degree um, but that has kind of been a theme now in Canada since that bubble. So since that bubble kind of fizzled out and in the wake of that, the correction from just that bubble caused one company home capital group to nearly go bankrupt and under, and they had to be rescued by the government. And it was Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's one of Warren Buffett's subsidiary companies who actually ended up stepping in and bailing them out. But the the interesting thing about that story was it was the same kind of subprime lending stuff that was going on with yeah. Home Capital Group, but they were just a something like three or four percent market share. Like you said, to your point, the the industry is just concentrated between five banks, basically. Yeah. It's just five big banks. But um, we don't call it subprime in Canada. We call it insured. 
and Canada has like the the biggest Ponzi scheme going, I think, in history because the government of Canada actually backs all of the mortgage-backed securities with their own AAA rating. So basically, yeah. even, and and the funny thing is, even the banks, and you'll find this hilarious, even the banks on these mortgages that are uninsured, the ones that yeah. aren't subprime, the banks will even buy insurance from the government for those because they know it's all garbage well, okay let, let me jump in there if you don't mind let's talk yeah about yeah AAA and we'll talk about subprime so AAA, obviously like when we saw what happened with moody's fitch and s&p back in 2008 it was a complete joke all right mm -hmm. and, and and just recently um during the two, 2020 let's say market scare when the world changed i gotta, I gotta <laughs> use crazy words because you know we'll get taken off um <laughs> yeah. it blows my mind so uh Oh gosh, I, I that gets me you know, thinking about another topic. But um, so so first off, subprime, uh, or no, no, sorry, S and P, S and P, Moody's and Fitch didn't they always downgrade when it's too late? Okay, why? Because they're in the job of being right. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to be right when it's Thursday and you come out, and you like come out, and you're like in your robe and you got your your coffee. And you're like everyone, it is Thursday, and everyone's <laughs> like, well, yeah, no doubt. Like oh, I just wanted to let you know. You can pay me for that now. And that's what they do. Like, pay me money and I'll give you my opinion. Well, you don't have an opinion. You just tell me, like, what's already happening. Yeah, the market is doing well today. We know it's like 35 million. Like, yeah, it's like and, immediate. Yeah, so that's what they do, right? Now, now let's talk about subprime. Now, now, what's funny is I've been talking about um, uh, adjustable rate mortgages and all that kind of stuff because in my mind, I'm already thinking in the future. I'm a contrarian and I'm already thinking of where the cycle is going to go. And people are like, ninja. There's not a lot of arms. I'm like, don't worry, hold my beer and watch this because interest rates are going up. When interest rates go up and people are having a hard time buying, they're going to move into arms. Now, ironically, and this is what's happening. If somebody right now Googles 30-year fixed mortgage, I bet you they're going to show, Google will show the average is like 4%, right? Mm -hmm. Ironically, they're probably going to show a 5-1 or 7-1 or a 10-1 arm at a higher rate. And you'd go, why would you ever do that? Why would you ever, you know, um, pay uh more interest for a, an arm. Well, that's because the banks are pricing those arms right now. And they're telling you that they do not believe that that house is going to be worth what you're, what we think it is today, five, seven, or 10 years from now. Okay. However, in a really hot market, when things are starting to move and interest rates are moving upwards and it's a good idea, you know, to move into an arm because you can't afford it, but you know, the housing market is hot. Mm -hmm. Banks, will bring those interest rates down. And so what will happen is, I'll give an example, in 2005 or uh, 2004, interest rates were starting to inch up because the Fed was raising rates. Right. And banks were going, well, real estate's where, where it is. It's hot. This is when we saw uh, banks were having these massive conferences where all these mortgage com companies would come in and they were having these, you know, pump you up. There's nothing better than the, you know, the mortgage-backed security market. Boom, boom, boom. Well, what happened is the banks were pricing their arms lower than the 30 year fixed, right? Because they said, yes, hey, you wanna get into a fixed rate and then it goes adjustable. And if it is higher, that's okay. We still feel that the more the, the value of that home is gonna be there or it's gonna be worth more at the end of that five, seven or 10 year term. So they would price it downwards. Right now, what we're seeing is actually something very interesting. They're not, as of right now, they're rising with a 30 year. So, right. No, so right now we almost have a perfect storm where you can't even bail into refi into a lower rate with a, an adjustable rate mortgage new home buyers as of right now unless it changes which i don't think it's going to the banks are really forcing uh rates higher um there's nowhere to go well that's mm -hmm. also why these uh these negam loans came out because you know properties were getting so hot they kept going up and nothing else was rising with inflation with it so really, there was no reason to believe that real estate would keep not keep going up because it wasn't like you were being robbed at the grocery store or robbed at the gas station, yeah. right? Fuel didn't go up until 2008. So so from 2003 to That's 2005, right. every, the banks were going, hey, there's a ton of disposable income inside of all these, these homes. So we can keep bringing up, you know, the housing prices are probably going to keep rising. Right. So I think it's very interesting. I do believe you may see a, a, a reversion, but I don't know with what happened in Russia with Russia today. 
I think banks might even price mortgages even higher in the next week, which would just blow my mind. Yeah, risk it's all risk premium, right? And that's what a lot of people kind of forget. And I tried to illustrate in a whiteboard video. I kind of took the idea off George, who's just great. But um, you know, it's it's interesting because when you think of mortgage rates, you everybody always thinks of the central bank. But it's not really the central bank who prices the rates. It's it's the banks. It's the same with printing money. It's really done through the commercial banks now. It's not something the central bank does. You know, and let me add to that. That's a great point you make. You're absolutely right. And a lot of people tell me all the time, they go, um, you know, when I said I'm calling for a 20, 20 plus percent mortgages in this next at the next peak of the cycle and people are like you can't you there's no way ninja because the fed can't do that the government won't be able to pay its debt and all you need to stop thinking that the federal reserve funds rate directly affects the mortgage rate it does in certain aspects mm -hmm. but you have to remember the banks are are pricing in risk yes. and if they do not believe that you're going to be able to pay your payment guess what because the government's saying you can stay home or employment super high and they're hiding those facts or inflation is exploding and pretty soon you're going to care less about paying your mortgage than paying to keep the electricity on and the food in your belly then they're going to price that that risk and people don't understand that because a lot of people go well the bank would go back bankrupt and i go no literally they won't because there's so many different ways they're robbing you anyway so <laughs> yeah. they're like no don't worry like we're gonna get ours here's we're good we're gonna be okay people we're not gonna go broke i don't know what you thought but we're fine <laughs> yeah. so, and that's what blows me away people don't understand those basic economic principles and i wish i wish i could have a whiteboard i still have not found a whiteboard but I've got you, you've had loads of whiteboards in your videos <laughs> I got like cardboard, like my bounce sheets. I'm like, I could write on this. I don't have a whiteboard. But I, I, that, I'm going to go over here now. <laughs> I laugh so much because you were doing those videos like a while back in front of whiteboards and you were just like <laughs> it was hilarious and my whiteboard is just a joke like it's it's the most tiniest whiteboard but it's okay size doesn't matter it's okay yeah. and I'll tell you what if you have a small whiteboard you know, yeah. let's, 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 let's not go too far. You have a six inch whiteboard. That's okay because I'm going to be honest with you. It's just do it in two easy steps and then you're already going to be in competition, bro. Yeah. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend I'm, I'm market uh, mania Canada right now. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm market mania Canada. Let's do this. I've got <laughs> this, the six inch whiteboard right here. And I'm going to show you in two easy steps. That's probably, I just, <laughs> yeah. your accent but you get the point yeah i get it Honestly. man i get it man i'm and, horrible at accents but i love doing them that was pretty good actually that wasn't bad it didn't sound australian at least <laughs> all my accents either yeah they, i don't know what i'm doing but yeah so you gotta have fun with this because it, it's exciting to be able to teach and share your thoughts like with me quite frankly i don't have the time to put in editing and a, a really cool whiteboard with all these graphics and stuff and you yeah. know i barely have the time to tie my shoes you know let alone wear a sports coat <laughs> um because i'm i'm running businesses and i've got other things i've still got a full-time career right. and um yeah. so i'm trying my hardest you know it's more of a venting thing but i think people just as long as you know it, it's okay not to catch every deal not to like yes. if you don't if you don't care about always catching the bottom and always catching the top because i don't know if people realize this you're never going to do it yes so that's true trying, yeah and you just you just clock a win like hey i bought a stock i i made 10 percent. i sold you know or i i got my original investment back and now i'm playing with the house's money and, and i mean that like playing with the house's money because this is gambling straight yes. up gambling you know if yeah. we were dividend investors um you know like i became a, a accredited investor when i was around 25 years old i've done private placements I've invested in oil wells, you know, limited partnerships. I've I've done things like that. Um, uh, you know, I've learned the tax strategies of being able to get tax credits, being able to write off investments if I make money or if I don't make money. And that's another concept people can't like. What do you mean you could write off your investment if you make a profit? You actually can. Yeah. Um, you know, and and those are things I got involved in. And I'm trying to teach people about them, but at the same time, there's certain things I can't like. I don't want to show you how to buy real estate no money down right now. Because I believe we're at the top of the market. Now, when I'm yeah. at, the, at the bottom, ironically, hopefully, hopefully we have a channel with a million people and we're crushing it. And I go, all right, guys, time to buy a house. And guess what? You're going to have people like screaming, you're insane. 
this is the bottom because I lived through that in 2010. Yes. So I like, yes, time to dive in. And people are like, you're crazy. You're stupid. You're nuts. And you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to go over here now. I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to go make money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's going to be interesting, uh, you know, because I've done this privately, you know, warning all my friends, family and coworkers. Now I'm doing it publicly. And so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, you know, with the public perception and stuff. So, but I'm excited to see what it's a big experiment. Well, yeah, you know what? Social media wasn't really going then back in 2008. To, I think Facebook was even launched in like 2008. The smartphone was really just coming around, I think, in 2008. Oh, yeah. So there wasn't really this big social media thing. Oh, I got to throw in something too. What blows me away is we have so many millennials. Or even not even my generation that have only been investing since 2010 and it blows my mind people mm -hmm. have only seen prosperity there was a crash in right. 2015 that most people don't understand or realize um yeah. and that was when the powell pivot happened but uh but they've only seen prosperity and yeah. i'm going to tell you there are going to be multi-millionaires that you know that are going to be completely wiped out in this next crash it'll happen so fast yeah, uh, I've lived and invested and and sold my investments before two crashes. I sold my stocks, went into bonds. Excuse me, during the dot com, I did the same thing with real estate in two thousand six. This next one will be impressive, and so yeah. that blows me away. People have only seen prosperity. The longest running run of not only the fiat currency, the dollar, what we're at, what, 44, 48 years, something like that, but also the longest consecutive time of lowest interest rates in history. Um, being fueled by a Federal Reserve that's just been renegade, you know? And so this yes. is going to be quite exciting, to be honest with you. Well, yeah. And I think a lot of Gen Zs have just got in like March 2020. Like that's when they started to get in. So they've only, again, seen the markets go up. Buy the dip was a great strategy, but it works the opposite way on the way down. I think I once read a book which was like, buy the dip till you're dead or something like that but it, it's just not a, a good long-term strategy. I mean, and I think that that phrase or term kind of gets thrown around a lot, like buy the dip and kind of frustrates me because a lot of people get caught up in that and think, oh, it's just as simple as buy when the stock goes down. Well, look at what's, what's happening to some of these tech stocks just absolutely killed over the past month or so. Like we're two months in. Let's just say you're a buy the dip kind of guy since the year 2000 and you were just an ETF guy. You'd be up maybe, maybe 2.5 times your money because of where you're buying up, where you're buying down. Whereas if you would have just bought gold, you'd be up. I'm just throwing this out. I'm thinking one of uh, five times your money, I think. Yeah, so it's yeah. interesting. The, the buy the dip is the dumb money. I'm telling yeah. you right now. In a yeah, cycle, no, you're cycle, right. Buying the dip is a great strategy in a cyclical bull cycle. Here's the problem. All the insiders already know. We've already missed it. <laughs> all out of the cyclical bull cycle, you're done. Enjoy. Now, the only thing that's going to save us, this is what's scary, is hyperinflation. Anybody yeah. that's a buy the dip buyer, hey, cool. Uh, you could be in Venezuela right now and just be a stock market guy and go, I'm making like 9,000 you know, percent. You're like, how's that feel? Because food's up 10,000 percent. You're like, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, so so your investments priced in something else tells a whole different story as opposed to people's just investments. Like, dude, I'm a 10 bagger. Like, cool. Like your insurance just went up 10 times too. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm staying up with it. You're like, okay, but gas <laughs> up 11. Ah, crap. All right. Well, okay. well I guess I'm going to buy a Hyundai. So, yeah. You know. yeah, no, you make a good point. And you made another good point about uh, like the psychology at the top because – when we we were actually looking to buy an investment property in Slough based off Crossrail, which was basically the expansion of the London Underground outward. And yeah. um, back then it was like 2011, 2012. And it was me, my girlfriend and her mother went in on that to a bank and they yeah. just laughed at us. They were really? like, you need to put 50% down. You need to sign on your home. And they were like, what, why would you want to buy an investment? Like properties are going down in price right now. And everybody I knew, all my friends were like, you're an idiot. Why would you just wait? Just wait a couple of years. And I think that is when you know when the bottom really is. Yeah, when you yeah. hear let, me that. You, let me ask you a couple questions. So um, you had to put like 50% down, you said. what? How yeah. much do you have to put down on a property in normal 
investment property now in the UK? What percentage? 20, 20%. Okay, big difference. Okay. And um, uh, the girl that you were dating, are you married to her now? No, but okay, we're still there. together. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> oh, you're still together. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> 10 okay. years, man, this year. Oh, yeah. Good. Congratulations. I had to throw that in there. But my yeah. point is that, okay, so so the, the down payment is huge, right? That changed yeah. a lot. So what you were doing is akin to like what people do here when they think that Elon Musk is going to build a, you know, a big battery uh, outfit out in the desert and they're, they're speculating. Right. Yes, and, yeah. and so I know where you're coming from because that's really important because you were looking at the future and you were looking, you know, as, as a, a, a most intelligent options possible. You were really trying to think through this. Yeah. Um, so you were a visionary. Yes. Because people were talking you out of it. Um, but it did the London underground extend to where you think it did was it going to. Yeah, yeah. So it was all approved. It took longer than they said it would. But the turnaround was insane on that investment. And to be honest, like wow. it was it was funny because one of my friends, you, you'll laugh at this as well. One of my friends in London and I fell out with him now. We don't talk much because and it's it, it reminds me of that neighbor sort of situation you had yeah. because he said to me. I'm going to, because Crossrail is due to complete this year, I think. Okay. And he said to me, I'm going to buy a house because of Crossrail. Uh -huh. And I was like, dude, a, a, like 10 years ago, yeah. I was doing <laughs> like so did you, you, did you get the property. That's another question. Yes. Yeah. And you did. So you put down 50%, you made it happen. And a guarantor. Like wow. I had to put the home up as well, like which wow. they owned outright. So without my girlfriend's mom we would have never been able to do that so so, it, so now you still own the property no no okay, sold but you, you sold it for a profit yes that's great so now what was your let's say this in your mind you and your girlfriend's mind when you were going to buy that property and you had to do all that guarantor um a 50 down all that stuff what was your out if something went bad like like what was the cash flow situation like i'm curious yeah, so we were cash flow positive, so we didn't really care. Like we I'm were like, well, right? yeah, yeah. So we were like, we're gonna, we can hold this forever. Like if we now, want. Uh, let me ask you this, because I don't mean to insult, because I say this all the time, because there's people all the time. You were doing something. You were speculating uh, on a, a, you know, it going up in value because of this rail, right? So, yes. so the community would grow outside of the city. A lot of people tell me right now they're investing and they go, yeah, I'm cash flowing. I'm like, how much do you have to put down? And they they tell me, and I'm like, well, I can make anything cash flow at 50, percent right? Yeah. But you were yeah. doing it for a different point, so that's really cool that you did that. I like that. Yeah. Um, but so at 50 percent down, were you cash flow positive not only on the mortgage for that property, but also because where did that 50 percent come from? It, it sounds funny. I'm dissecting this situation. Was it cash, or did it come from a, a loan on another property? Yeah. So that's an interesting point because they don't allow that in the UK. So it was all okay. cash. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. So you were getting a yield. Do you did you yeah. ever figure out the number? Or do you remember the percentage you were getting? Uh, or what most people investors call cash on cash. What kind of return were you getting on that cash? That fifty percent down that you put on that property. Yeah, so I think afterwards it was like fifteen percent. So it was really good. Yeah, it you was were really good. Away inflation. You were yeah, you were crushing it. That's because because at that time it was just a perfect spot where the market was just in a terror and to be totally honest with you it was one of the most daunting experiences of my life because when you're thrown all that and everybody's saying you're gonna fail you're gonna fail you're gonna fail and you and people don't understand this like when you get to the bottom of markets like that there is fear everywhere yeah. fear is sold to you there's like blood on the streets people are getting foreclosed on and you're like having to go against the flow it's kind yeah. of like not buying stocks when everything's going up and not participating in that fomo the opposite of that well but, that's what i'm hoping for ninja nation is like literally a, a, a nation of people it's like all right guys let's take the mountain right now we're gonna go buy those homes yeah and, and, and just like when everyone else is laughing just doing those videos, like, don't worry, man, enjoy the laughs. I yes. had to learn how to enjoy the mocking. You know, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> there were days when I would walk into my department, and I used to, you know, my my place where I work, and 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 I used to try and talk people into buying Bitcoin at 40 bucks. Now I didn't buy it at 40. I wish I would have because I listened to the mocking. Right when I was yes. trying to tell them, hey guys, let's all just go buy one Bitcoin. Three <laughs> you know, we all make six figures. Come on, let's do it. And everyone's like, no, you're crazy. I'm like. Wow, you guys are dumb. If you make six figures and you can't spend 40 bucks, I guess. But guess what? I was dumb too. 
I didn't buy my first Bitcoin until it was 500. That's embarrassing. I took a note pad and I said, right, buy some Ethereum today at a dollar. And I forgot. So I still have that note. And I, I bought my first Ethereum at 50, right? But I'll tell you what, my life changed when I did buy it at 50 and I bought Bitcoin at 500. And, um, and those same people that would mock would mock me when it went from 500 to 19 grand and then it fell to 10. Boy, they were so excited. It was like, <laughs> like Christmas had opened up. The ninja has lost money. And I sit there and I look at him like, Jeez. That, that's the hill you want to die on today? And then they're like, yeah, Bitcoin's crashing. What do you think of that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm still up like 20 times. I'm sorry. You know, and my whole point is that enjoy the mocking. Take it inside. Enjoy it. Feed on it. Use it to fire you up. I mean, that's what I'm doing on YouTube these days. You know, I want to be able to show people just common sense thinking, common sense investing. And then we're going to get a little nutty one of these days. I'm going to throw on a sports coat and I'm going to get myself a really uh, neon board. And and then I'm going to crush it. You know, and I'll, I'll show my private jet. It's remote control. It's pretty sweet. It's in the back. <laughs> yeah. I'm not running right now. The battery's not. Battery's charging. Oh, is that the one that you've had flying around in some of your videos? Don't give all my secrets. That was an A10 warthog. Yeah, was it? Was didn't something crash or something? Yeah, or... you saw that one. Yeah. So what happens is I make these videos, and these guys are always out every Saturday. Now they know me as the YouTube guy. And um, he, <laughs> and one day I'm like, hey, just make a show, air show behind me. Like, all right. And they're flying <laughs> these planes, and this expensive plane just rah, augers in, and I can see it in the camera. And I'm just making a video, and I don't like to edit, and I don't ever do retakes. I'm not joking. Like very rarely we're like, oh, son of a biscuit. And I'll just hit stop and I'll start again. I'm like, my time's valuable. I got my McDonald's coffee. Second that thing's empty, I'm out of here. So I see the airplane auger in. And I'm like, I think I might even say like, well, that wasn't good. You know, and, and I just kept going with the video. And you could see the guy like walking the walk of shame behind me. You know, to go get uh, yeah. yeah. And then he's like walking back with this plane. And I'm like trying. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. And it was so funny. <laughs> It was a pretty funny video. Yeah, yeah, that was insanely funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know what? I don't want to take up any more of your time because I know oh, I you are a that. busy, busy guy. <laughs> I'm going to go eat a whole pizza and just uh, drown my sorrows. Out there now. <laughs> Love it, man. Um, I'm just going to see if there's any questions that are oh, here yeah. in the chat. See if we go can you see the chat as well? I can actually. Oh, there's good, good. There's been a couple of uh, comments that made me want to laugh, and I was trying not to. So, yeah, which ones? <laughs> let's, let's not say it out loud. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we'll let people go and figure out what comment it is. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really does see. Ninja rec I got one. So this is from Gloria. Uh, Gloria says, "Does Ninja recommend buying now or not?" Gloria, what are you talking about? Let's find out. Like, are you talking real estate? Talking about crypto? Because there's a lot of different stuff. And just so you know, Gloria, before you, yeah, I'm not a financial professional. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a dream. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll take a second, but yeah, Gloria, I want to find out. Yeah, there's that's a good question. Yeah. No. Yes. Let's talk about real estate. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's probably well known that I decided, even though I've been saying market crash, I called the top of the market last uh, June. And the reason why I did is there's a bunch of reasons, but now we're in this melt up top right now, right? And it's a fear, a panic thing. And it's driven by insanely record low inventory, which tells you we have already peaked, right? Home mm -hmm. Depot say, uh, um, uh, sales just came out and their uh, quarterly earnings, and they were just blowing away the street. That's what happens at the end of a cycle. Real estate agents are leaving, right? Well, with all that said, I'm like, hey, the market's crashing, but I'm going to buy a house. And people just lost their mind. People like, oh, I'm unsubscribing. I'm like, cool, go. People like, I can't believe you. You're an idiot. I'm like, please leave. You're banned from the channel. And I, I need like a scepter. Like, and so people were blown away. And what I was going to do, and ironically, I was outbid by 100. I was going to buy a house. It was only like 750 grand. And I was going to uh, buy it. I put an offer for 765. We got outbid at 850. And I'm... I'm an, a real estate agent, not active. I'm a horrible real estate agent, actually. Don't ever try to use me. I'm horrible um, because I can't just sell you something that I know. Yeah, you, I can't do it. You um, believe in what you sell. But I'm not joking. I worked with the best real estate agents in the business in our local area. And I owned a real estate. Uh, I was a part owner in a real estate brokerage that did $50 million worth of uh, real estate transactions the first six months. So just three people. Wow. And so 
I've been around the block and I'm, I'm also a real estate investor from, you know, back 2001. So I decided to go buy a house. I did this video. People were blown away. And uh, why would you ever do that? And I said, because I'm about to turn a liability into an asset. And, and actually those were the words of Chris Taylor from financial fitness. He's the one that told me, he's like, wow, you're, you're literally, and Chris owns like six rentals. He goes, you're guy, gonna, yeah. yeah. Cause he knew my, my project. He knew what I was going to do. Cause I was going to take a property with a few acres. I was going to put a second unit on it. Um, I have, you know, my media company, I've got a I've got a construction business. I've also got a, a you know, we have our, our engineering license, our general license and stuff here in America, in California. And, but I was also going to start a small farm, you know, and what I was going to do is I was actually going to do it for the YouTube channel was show that anybody can start a business. I was going to go through all the different steps of starting business. But I believe everyone should start a business right now. If you mm -hmm. can start a business in the hardest time, you're going to crush it in the good times. It's and very um, true. so between write-offs, credits, tax credits, agriculture credits, things like that, and then being able to save certain things, like I wouldn't be on city water, things like that. I was going to show how I was going to actually put $24,000 a year in my pocket in savings and actual money and checks coming into my hand. And wow. um, that's the only reason I decided to buy it. So here's here's the super long answer, Gloria. You should always buy if you believe a couple different things. First, you're going to have a, you have a good job and you're going to be in the area for quite some time because you always want something to fall back on. Secondly, if you're paying your payment is the same or less than rent, then why wouldn't you buy? Who cares if the market falls by half like it did with me in 2005? When I bought at the top, I told my wife, this house is going to lose 50%. It actually only lost 40% of its value, but it didn't matter because my fixed mortgage uh, price was still less than rent when the house was worth half. So mm -hmm. sometimes you need to, to separate yourself from your, what your assets are worth and also think about, uh, you have to start, you know, separate from that and then think about what your monthly uh, run rate is, your, you know, your cash flow in and then your run rate. Those are the two, you know, a balance sheet. It's so important. Some yes. people only think monthly. Some people uh, think, you know, out like a year out, very rare. I think about both and I, I combine them both, which means that not every situation is going to be the same. Every investment is not going to be handled the same. So I think it's very important. So if, if somebody is right now, you can buy a house and you have enough of a down payment and um, and your payment is going to be the same or less than rent. Why wouldn't you? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of people try and speculate and they, you know, I sold my house in 2018. I bought silver and Bitcoin and people laughed at me and they still laugh at me. Um, well, no, not, I guess not a lot of them do because uh, now they know. the <laughs> But my point <laughs> is that they would sit there and they'd go, look, at you could have made like 25 30% more on your house, you moron. And I'm like, <laughs> I bought Bitcoin. Like, oh, you're even more dumb than I thought. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You're right. I'm an idiot. And 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 that's the thing. It's just like after a while, it's like, okay, I'm an idiot. So you see why I like to do interviews? Because I want to be myself. I can't be like this on Ninja Channel. <laughs> yeah, it's too much of a big, big thing now. <laughs> I, I can't I can't be this goofy. People are like, I'm unsubscribing. You're not <laughs> I, I cannot take you serious. I'm like, you shouldn't. Like I yeah. and I just got out there like I can't believe anyone would take financial advice from me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the idea. Don't that's what you say every time. Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I am a moron. I will I will literally go in front of the judge and go, really? Like he was listening to me. <laughs> yeah. Give me a gavel. This guy is an idiot. Go. So anyway, I hope I answered her question. Was yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at my time thing real quick. Let's see where I gotta be. Okay, nowhere. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Or um, yeah, I was just looking over what she put here. Yes, true, and rent is super high. Yeah, you know what? That's that's a good point. So like here in Canada, um, I mean, you can barely find a property across the entire country, which is just crazy. Maybe on the east coast in some really small area but most like big cities here and that's where people tend to invest their money you're talking like rents are 30 to 70 percent less than buying which is just yeah. insane especially in like toronto and vancouver markets in particular like they are just miles away and people are actually going into things like condos where their payment 
is like tied to inflation you can imagine like their condo fee payment is totally tied to inflation and they're going into these things and they're putting their own money in and like i always say it's it's always good when markets are going up and everything's rosy but i always think like worst case scenario what's going to happen what happens if i lose my job what happens if um my girlfriend loses her job you know will we still be able to sustain it will we still be able to rent it out so you're exactly right there. Well, it's... that's very important to think like that because there are people that are very close to me and they'll ask me questions like, why are you still working? <laughs> they can't even comprehend why they know things about me and they go, why are you working? And I said, because this could end tomorrow. And so many people don't think like they don't even, oh, okay. And then what my best friend hit me up one day uh, a few weeks ago and he says, you know, I was thinking about what you said. I'm like, what? And he goes that it could end tomorrow. And he goes, you're really smart in thinking that. And I go, Charlie, you know me of like 15 years. And he goes, yeah, but like I never realized it. Like you're right. It could end tomorrow. And Charlie, my friend, uh, great guy. He's amazing, actually. That's why I want to be his best friend. He, uh, <laughs> he He's learned the hard way a couple different times. And he's built amazingly uh, amazing fortunes and, and, and buildings. And he's just crushed it. And, and he's in that loop of, oh, it's different this time. And the thing is that people look at real estate and they go, you look at a long-term chart of real estate, it's just going up. Well, there are massive crashes in that up going up, but you have to remember mm -hmm. two things. It's the destruction of the purchasing power of the currency that's causing that real estate to go up. Also, long-term interest rates show at least from 1980 till now, we have been in a downtrend to literally 0% Fed funds rate, which means mortgages have continually dropped from like 18.5% to essentially 2.5%. Yeah. So in the last 40 years, we've seen real estate rise because of that. But then the most important thing that people don't realize is that the mortgages have gotten longer. You know, a mortgage used to be seven mm -hmm. years. Then it was 10, 15, it keeps going, and then 20, and then 30, right? Yeah. You have to remember yeah. the reason why a mortgage went from 20 year mortgage to a 30 year is because something really bad happened. It, it got really expensive. And I believe that we are on the cusp of a 40 year mortgage becoming a government uh, authorized loan, like a, an insured loan. And that's going to really be sad. You want to know why? Because, in, because there might be a day where I go, oh my gosh, guys, buy all the real estate you can. Because if they announce a 40 year mortgage, speculation is going to run rampant and for the yeah. first couple of years of that uh, loan program it's going to cause rates to explode and i actually haven't talked about this uh on my channel i've, I've touched on it a couple times but so your your subscribers are getting the first view of this because i'll be <laughs> up soon because the 40-year mortgage has already been laid out it it's a it's a it's a setup loan that's been out there i want to say available but not reachable because the interest rate was so high for the last six to seven years but what really happens in the last two years because of this uh 2020 miracle of craziness right, that happened um we uh the this is the bank solution to keep you in your house and there's a whole nother you know a whole nother story behind that and what they're doing with 40 year but i believe that we're going to see during this next crash a 40-year mortgage if they keep running prices up and interest rates keep going up they'll say hey we can do a 40-year mortgage and what you don't realize is you're a slave now for 40 years instead of 30. Yeah, you know what? Um, there's a guy called Hilliard Macbeth, actually, who writ this book, which I read right here. Yeah. And um, he's actually agreed to come on here as well. And you'll be really interested to watch that, actually, because in Canada, they actually did that before 2008. They did a 40-year insured mortgage, and it turned into a total disaster because... Wow. It was and and really, I don't know the ins and outs of that. And he, because he's a lot older than I am, and yeah. he was around for that. And he he works in financial markets. I think he's got a hedge fund or something like that. But he knows a lot about what happened there, and that is definitely something that I got right down after this. You know what's really interesting about. is if hedge funds or or banks really started thinking about this, they started looking at their risk profile when it comes to real estate investing. And how much money they want to put out if they started to actually put out a 50-year mortgage and they treat it like a bond mm -hmm. and they actually lowered the interest rate you'd actually see killer response you know from investors right yes uh, yeah. because over the term of 50 years you've got a bunch of cycles inside of that 50 years and the fact are if you believe that the federal reserve or whatever bank just put it in in that slot 
um, is going to continue to destroy the currency, then you know that that asset's going to be worth more on a fiat basis in 50 years than it would be in a shorter term. So it's funny. We got these long bonds, you know, um, you know, 30 year bonds where people will put a ton of money into it and just get a little bit of money. Whereas if you set up like a 50 year mortgage, um, especially especially with a clause, you know, you can't refi for a certain amount of years. Investors yeah. can actually make a pretty good clip of money. Um, but the thing is, it would also cause rampant speculation in the real estate market. So yeah. you got to take out the grain of salt. Yeah, no, that's exactly true. And one last thing I just want to pick yeah. your brain on. Somebody asked the question. I'll shove it up here. What do you think about all the stuff that's going on in Canada right now as an outsider, outside of Canada? What do you think about that, Ninja? Because so, that... so the sad thing is, is that it's not an outsider thing. So let me first explain. Most people don't understand what a bail-in is. A lot of people now can talk about bailouts. This is they're, good, yeah. Yeah, they're pros. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know what a bailout is. I'm like, yeah, you. so what's a bail-in? And they look at you like you're crazy. You're, like, you're talking about bailout. I'm like, no, 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 bail-in. Mm -hmm. And what I'm referring to is a set of laws that were set up in the, after the Great Recession. And uh, it's the opposite of a bailout. You know, when a bank uh, is in trouble, instead of the government coming to its rescue and the taxpayer eventually paying for it, uh, now all of the unsecured creditors of the bank, being you, if you have money in the bank, are going to have to pay for it. Now, they already did a, uh, a test run in Greece and in Cyprus. And then Canada was next level. Canada was the next level. And the sad thing is, now, it's really exciting to watch, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, and them backpedal, like, maybe this uh, pulling money out of the banks or, you know, freezing accounts is a good idea. I'm like, yeah, moron, it wasn't a good idea. But that's cool <laughs> because I know, guys, I remember you guys set up a lot of these laws before there was social media. And I know they're trying to, you know, stomp on it. But, uh, um, it's 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 not an outsider thing. And I want people to know that people that are listening to America, whatever country you're in right now, those laws are already set up. And yeah. uh, and and right now we have this convoy headed to Washington. I've and seen, the, yeah. the one that I covered, they state straight up said we are not going into Washington. And there are multiple convoys and people need to understand that. I haven't put that video. I, I got to get it edited edited. But um, they made a statement. They're like, we're not going into Washington. We are not going to close down a beltway. There are multiple convoys. And. <laughs> People need to understand that. And there's some scary things coming. And I believe that, honestly, if if we see the same type of resistance in Washington as we did with the trucker convoy, and I'm going to be honest with you, I love watching people stand up for their rights, honestly. Yes, yes, Nothing same. Nothing better than that. I mean, I don't care what mm. side you're on. You know, yes. people are like, hey, you know, BLM, you know, stood up for the rights. I'm like, cool, stand up for your rights. Yes. Do it peacefully. Don't do it like, you know, don't do it. I don't care what color you are, what sex you are. I don't care any of that crap. We're all human beings. And if yes. you want to fight for our rights, fight for your rights. But do it, you know, peacefully. And, 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 and it should be such a big outflowing of support that it's like, well, we can't even fight it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so the, my point is that I think that the U.S. could actually make something, make Canada look mild. <laughs> weeks. And I'm very concerned about that. And I believe yeah. there's going to be some very scary things in March. And I'm not, I don't want to spread FUD, but facts are facts. And there's so many people, you're a fear monger. I'm like, you're a moron. I'm like, look, these are just, <laughs> if you want, there's a safe space. I'll get some chalk. We'll circle it around real quick. Yeah. And, um, I literally said that once to a CEO of a, uh, a billion, almost billion dollar company <laughs> panicking one day. And I'm like, Hey, I got some chalk. If you want, I'll draw a circle around. We're going to have you sit inside and suck your thumb. And he looks at me all sideways. I'm like, well, you need to sit down and take some time because life is really stressful. And he, you know, he just sort of snapped out of it. Right. There was like, I guess he'd never had anyone talk to him like that. But my point being is that um, it, it's very sad. It's scary. But like the other day when I was at that convoy, everybody was praising and thanking the Canadian truck drivers that led the yes. charge. And it always takes one person, just like the Berlin Wall. Remember, it takes one mm -hmm. or two people to stand next to a wall and look at that wall, whatever that wall bit is in your life, and go, we can take this down. And then a third person, okay, we can take it down. And before you know it, the guards are sitting there watching you, and they're just like, what do we do? What do we do? Like, ah, they're not a threat. And then four people show up and five people. And the guards go on break to get lunch. They come back, and there's 10. And they go, well, that was weird. But that's okay. It's still 10. And before you know it, there's hundreds and they're going, crap, what do we do? And then when they start going, oh, should we fire a warning shot? Whether, you know, and I'm talking, I'm not talking like a real shot, right? I'm, yeah. A like, real warning shot. They mm -hmm. go, oh, we're screwed. And the warning shot in Canada was those banks, the freezing of the accounts. Yes. And you're watching the outcry. And guess what? Gold and silver exploded. 
yes. buying gold and silver exploded, not just the price. Like mm -hmm. you go try and buy some some ounces right now and watch what happens, you know, to the, the delivery uh, days. And I'm telling you right now, the price of our spot is X amount, right? You used yes. to be this when I was investing. Now it's this much. <laughs> so yeah. what happens is the days of delivery go to this. And then what happens are people that the, the, the price of our spot just matches it. And so I, I think that we're in that next phase. I think this next month is going to be scary and exciting all wrapped up in one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you on that. And yeah, my one of my friend works at a trading desk at Silver Gold Bull, yep. uh, which I think you mentioned before in one of your videos. But yeah, they had insane volumes coming through. They yep. ran out of silver actually oh, at yeah. one point because of all that stuff going on. There was big movie, big money moving. Like uh, had one order across his desk that was three million dollars just for one. So a lot of people were moving money around. But, oh, yeah. but yeah, I don't want to take up any more of your yeah. time. I've already took enough up and I just cannot thank you enough for donating your time here and coming on and supporting this channel. Absolutely. And hey, hopefully I haven't said too much because I'm going to go share this with my subscribers. So hopefully we give you a good boost because remember, that's what Ninja Nation is all about is helping other people that are going out there, telling the truth, helping, sharing. And I know you've been crushing it. I saw you when you drove like all the way down to George Gammon's event, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I met up with George back in uh, December. And you know what? I want to meet up with you, man. So we've got to get dude. that nailed. That'll was, be awesome. That'll be uh, awesome. I'm, yeah, so you're out there crushing it, man. So I can't wait to share it and hopefully get more of uh, the subscribers moved over to your channel to see your work. And let's just make this happen, dude. Yeah, man. And let me know when you're in Vegas. When you're next in Vegas, let me know, man, because I'll be Why, there. Are you like in Vegas like all the time? Maybe that's all. <laughs> no, it's just easy to get to from where I'm at. All right. I'm going to be in Vegas soon, but it's for business. I ooh, Wait a minute. I am going to have a Ninja Media up in Vegas. I haven't announced it yet. Okay. Well, I am just let have me. One end of March. So, yeah, let me. I'll let you know for sure. Yeah. We're, yeah we're, that... It's business, but I'm, I'm mixing business with pleasure. That's what you so, want to do. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to we're going to do a ninja meetup in Vegas for one night. So, yeah, let me let you know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, man. And you yeah. have a great rest of your day there. You too, man. Have a great day. <laughs> See you later. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this stream and you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next stream. Peace and love, guys. Bye bye.